What's up, the you of tube? And today I thought topics have been a little bit simple. So I thought, you know what? We need to shake things up. So today I'm going to be talking about fat kids. Careful. Step on the glass, staple your tongue. Ah. Wait, oh, oh, put your keyboards down, put your keyboards down. I have notes. See? Lots. Notes. This is not an attack worthy video. This is a video about some home truths. Some shit that maybe people needed to hear for a little bit of time and also a little bit of empowerment. So, before you hate on me, just wait, sit through this video and get to the end and hopefully by the end of it, you will not only feel better, but you will feel like you have more tools and a better view on the world to be able to attack the problem. So yes, it is an undeniable fact that over the last kind of decade, we have seen an increase in obesity in general, but that has now also filtered down into the kiddiewinkles. This is good for witches with gingerbread houses in the woods, but bad for future generations. So today what we're going to talk about is why this is happening and also what you can do to help prevent it. Now, you might be a parent with a child. You might be a child yourself, a kitty winkle, and you feel like you're a little bit overweight. Maybe you haven't felt like you were able to talk to somebody about it. Or you've been playing on your mind and you just kind of play it down. You play it cool like it doesn't bother you, but it really does. It's okay, I got you back. By the end of this video, you're going to feel better. And parents, hopefully you're going to have a little bit more of a plan of action and also feel a bit better about the whole situation. Now, I'm going to be talking about why I think this is happening and why you, yes you, could be to blame, but not like you think. Not in a bad way, not like I'm coming at you because it's your fault, but more for the fact that we're to blame, usually through lack of knowledge or lack of action, both of which I'm going to cover. Now, you might be a parent watching this and you're thinking, Lex, who the hell are you to talk to me about children? You don't have kids and you would be right. But what I do have is some good ideas. You might also just be a kid yourself watching this and you might be a little bit overweight and it's bothering you. Maybe you talk to somebody about it or maybe, maybe you don't feel like you can talk to anybody and you just play it off like you don't care, but really you do. Well, kid, I got you back here, but you're going to have to both, both of you, that's parents and kids, have to listen to what I'm saying. Don't get defensive about it. Just listen to what I'm saying. Take it on board and apply it to your life. Do you do these things that I say you shouldn't be doing? Are you doing the things that I'm going to give you things to do? Because if you're not, both of these things can be changed, which can create positive results. So first up, let's talk about failings in the system. And it is true. I know everyone likes to blame everyone else for things, but there is definitely an argument here that our current system is failing. And by that, I mean society and educationally, there's a lack of knowledge of food. There's a lack of knowledge of how to eat, what we should eat. There's also a very lazy mentality of everything come out of packets and people not even be able to cook anymore. Now, it's a fact. Kids aren't taught about food in schools. They should be, but they're bloody not. And you as parents, if you've got a kid and he's overweight, that's your human being. It's your job to help them out. They don't know any bloody better. When I was a kid, if I could have been left to eat an entire tin of biscuits, believe you me, I would. Every last one of them. I did. I ate meringues until I threw up. I ate ginger biscuits until I threw up. But if my mum was there when the biscuit tin was there, it was pick which one you want because I just got in off a bike ride or we just had a nice balanced meal and it was my little treat. But I didn't get the whole thing. And if your kid kicks up a stink, kids, if you're kicking up stinks, quit it. Give your parents a goddamn break if they've given you a nice meal. Parents, tell your kids to shut up. Tell them no. Create some boundaries. What I'm saying here is we all need them. We all need structure and boundaries. We thrive off it. And if we don't have those and everything is just kind of haphazard every day, all different, of course, there's going to be no way of making things consistent and things are going to be hard to change. So first off, what we need is to understand food and to understand that we need to control it. Now, this is a huge subject and I can't cover it in this video without it being over an hour long, but you need to research macronutrients. Parents, research macronutrients and start understanding food. Start understanding what is on the back of labels. Now, I will link videos in the description from here. If you want me to do a full beginner's guide to macronutrients and food breakdowns, I will. Just give me a hell yeah in that comment section and I'll do it. But what you need to know is no food is evil. You don't have to take your kid or if you're watching these kids and you want to do it and you're wanting to lose that weight, you don't need to start eating cabbage soup. 
But what you do need to start doing as a family, as a unit, as a group, is start volume controlling. Aim for three square meals a day. Start reducing the snacks. Start looking at what's going on the plates. Is there a balance between the meat, the carb sauce, like your potatoes and pasta, and then the fats? Is it cooked in oil? Is there cheese on it? Start taking away one of those and minimizing. Either have a meal that's high in fat, low in carb, or higher in carb and lower in fat, but always with a good solid level of protein in there. That's gonna help easily, immediately start balancing your meals. Try and make each meal relatively similar through the days of the week so that you know what's going on. Then if people aren't losing weight or they're losing too much weight or they're putting on weight, you can start controlling things because you know what's going in so you know what you're able to take out and reduce down. Make a bit of sense, hopefully. Failing two, schools. Everybody thinks, if the school serves it, it must be okay for the kids. The kids are gonna make smart choices because they're at school. Wrong. Schools are on budgets. Schools suffer. They don't have a lot of money to put into, usually, classes. Never mind the goddamn food. So, they're gonna be cheap and cheerful, bought on mass, bought in volume, easy to cook, easy to store, last a long time. You get where I'm going with this. They're not usually gonna be balanced choices. And the choices that are there, if you're allowing the kids to make them themselves, they're gonna go for the tastiest thing on that selection board. Of course you are, it's too much temptation. So be aware of what your kid's are eating at school. Kids, when you're at school, if you've had pie for lunch that day, understand when you go home, you can't have pie again or something really heavy. Make your choices. Do you wanna eat something a little bit heavier and fun later at night or do you wanna eat it whilst you're at school? Personally, I go for the one at home, it probably tastes better. During your day, have one kind of really, ooh, I want a bit of that meal. And when you go home, be a bit more sensible and don't have the extra snacks on top. Yes, you're gonna to have to make an effort. Yes, you're gonna to have to make choices. Yes, you're gonna to have to be accountable. Parents, yes, you're gonna to have to watch what your kids do. You own that human being and you're gonna to have to control it because they rely on you to do that. If you give them the choice, they're gonna eat the whole biscuit tin, they're gonna eat two pies and ask for ice cream. I would. See where I'm going with this. It's all about accountability and monitoring and consistency. And I know, I know it's tough and I know it sucks, but believe me, you do anything for about 28 days a month and it will become a habit. It will become easier. You might even learn about foods you've never tried before and learn to love them and they might be good for you. Madness. So as this is probably highly confusing, let's do a quick roundup on that food control. What we first want to look at is volume control. So we want to be looking at the amount of food we're eating each day. We want to try and make that consistent. Let's reduce down the snacking. Let's have more square meals a day. Let's get some set meals with a good balance to them. Let's start monitoring what your kids are eating at school. Start looking at what's on the lunch menus and ask them what they're picking. Maybe help them keep it. You keep a diary for them, just ask them and then you write it down so that you can judge them what they need to eat those evenings. Kids, if you want to, if you know you're having something heavier later in the day, like there's some special meal you're going out to or something cool is happening later at home. When you go to school for lunch, pick the healthier option. Don't have those extra sweets at lunch. Wait till you get home and have it then. You're still getting those treats. You're just getting them later on. You have to have that balance and you have to have that control. You have to have that commitment. Knowledge. Parents, you're going to have to do some research on food. Please research macronutrients. Again, if you want me to do it, let me know in the comments section. I will do a beginner's guide to macronutrients so you can get a gauge on why no food is evil, but just all food has to be controlled volume-wise. But what it basically boils down to is healthier foods, you're allowed a lot more of them for the same calorie value as an unhealthy food. That's how it works. The unhealthy foods that we class as unhealthy, they're basically more calories in smaller portions. And a quick analogy that's always really good is if you take a teaspoon of sugar, which is like probably like 15 grams of carbohydrate, that's probably equivalent to around about 80 grams of potato. Teaspoon of sugar, 80 grams of potato, same carb levels. And that's what macronutrient learning will teach you. And once you know this, I promise you, the freedom of food will just be like, ooh, what was this? Anyway, it's good, it's a good thing. Failing number three. We cannot rely on schools to have our kids being active enough, so yes, you're going to have to do the work yourselves. Does that mean taking kids to after school clubs and things like that? Probably. Is it gonna suck because it's gonna take up more of your time, you're already wrecked after getting in from work? Yes, but you have a little human that you need to take care of. So it's just tough titties. You're gonna to have to get out there and help them. Plus, trust me, you're probably gonna feel really good when your kid goes to do something because they wanna make you feel proud. They want you to see them do well. And again, that's where this support comes in of helping each other. Kids, if your parents are offering to take you places and do things, 
Oh my God, grab hold of it. Because you've got a good mum and dad there who are trying to help you be better. So take those opportunities and go and make them proud. And also, going to team events and things like that is gonna help you because you're going to get involved in social activities. You know, like talking to real human beings instead of LOL, F-M-L-A-R-A. <laughs> and the kids, trust me, when you start doing the sports and you're not used to doing it and you're out of breath and it sucks and it's horrible, you're working. Every time you're out of breath, you're doing good, you're working. Every time you feel like, oh, I can't go on. Great, you've pushed yourself so far, you, can't, you feel like you can't go on, but trust me, you'll be able to. And eventually, these things will get easier. You'll get fitter, you'll get better, you'll get faster. You just have to stick with it. And eventually, eventually, you'll forget what it even felt like to be that kind of way. I promise you. So you as well, kids have to take responsibility. Let your parents help you, parents, help your kids. The more activity that you can do, the bigger the buffer zone, the bigger choice of food you're gonna get, and the happier you're gonna be. You do good stuff, you get good stuff. And last but not least, you're gonna to have to get a little bit tough. And this is a big one, attitude. People go towards weight loss as if it's something horrific and is gonna suck and is gonna be a terrible, terrible time, but it's only for a short time. This is wrong. You're going to fail if you approach it like this. It's not about a short-term change, it's about a lifestyle change. It has to be long-term and you have to accept this before you start or you're not gonna succeed. The reason most people are overweight is because they have bad habits. Like I said, they eat through boredom or they eat through emotions and you have to start adjusting these mechanisms. You have to fix it. Parents, that means maybe you don't have as much crap in the house for the kids. Maybe you don't give in to the every whinge and whine or tantrum and you spend a week of wanting to pull your hair out of your head and pull your ears off so you can't hear them squawking anymore. But if you just put up with it for a week of pain in the ass, eventually they'll give in. They're not gonna keep grinding and grinding away, especially when you start building better routines on top of it, especially when they start getting a reward system. So you do good, you get good. And once you start implementing that and it becomes their normal, it becomes a consistency, things will get easier. But most things always get a little bit tougher before they get easier and that is just tough shit. It's the way it works and you gotta grind through. Like I keep saying, it's your little human, they're your responsibility. You're gonna have to put up with a bit of crap. So parents, if you have food in the house that the kids can get to all the time and they're overeating, don't buy it in. Will you have to sub because maybe you want it as well but you can't have it because they can't have it? Yes, tough crap. You're human, your responsibility. Help them be better. It's also gonna help you be better anyway. Do you need to be snacking on that crap? Probably not. Does it really matter if you don't get it to make your child healthier? Definitely not. Also, Kitty Winkles, if you're going to that biscuit tin, sneaking in there when your mum and dad aren't there, like, <laughs> you know you're gonna feel bad later. And if you don't like the way you are now, if you don't like the way you feel now, is it worth that like 30 seconds of <laughs> It really, really isn't. So I want you to set yourself the challenge of every time you feel that need, that want to go and just do that, you go, no, you know what I'm gonna do instead? I'm gonna get myself a Ribena or a Vimmers. I'm gonna drink that down. I'm gonna go and take my brain and get it involved in something else. Because usually, the reason you want to do that is because you're bored. And that's where the activities come into play again. Outside of that, it goes into other parenting realms that I have no idea about, but these are just things I'm throwing at you. You know what I'm saying, so don't get butthurt about it. You know exactly what I'm saying. You know there's changes that you can make, and you know you can do it. You just have to stick it out. Plus, if you're trying to lose weight, you have the ultimate motivation and your little human being. You want them to be better, and in turn you can make yourself better? Is there any better reason to even start this journey? So what I'm saying is you need to look at this as being a lifestyle thing. It's not an eight to 12 week transformation, so stop looking at all that crap. It's a basic changes, foundational changes. Oh no. One failure through a whole week does not undo all the good that you've done. If you slip off once, okay, you stop, you look at why it happened, you reset and you carry on. You do not let that one failure dictate all the good you've done that week. If there's more wins than there are losses with your child, with you, with your eating, with your family eating, that is what matters. That's what matters. Because you'll see those wins week to week will build up because they're bigger wins than there are losses and that will keep you moving forward. And that's what happens. And eventually those wins will become easier and easier because it becomes a habit. But what you have to accept is nobody is making things feel hard for you because they're trying to be mean. It's biology. We all live under the same rules of biology. Now there are genetic differences and you've got to accept that. So yes, there are some people that can eat what they want and they don't seem to put on weight. Tough shit. It's the way it is. Work on you, 
focus on you and do what you need to do to get you where you want to be. Parents, you have to structure things so that it works for your lifestyle, your times, and you have to make compromises. It's the way it's going to be. So don't look at other parents who've got kids that don't have these problems. It sucks, I know, but you've got it and you can bust through it. It sucks right now, but you build these consistencies, you build these positive reward systems, you start doing it as a unit, as a family, getting involved, doing more things, eventually it will get easier. I know I wish I had a super secret answer. I wish I had all the answers, the exact specific things to tell you to go and do, but I don't. I just have these ideas and I'm hoping that by putting them out there, it's, it's landing with a few of you that you just it makes it click and you're like, Fuck yeah, I'm gonna go and try and do that. I'm going, fuck, I'm gonna try and be better at that. Yes, I can change this. Oh, that's easy, I can I can implement that. And you don't have to do it all at once. Just just try and improve like 50% of the crap that's going on. And then once that starts rolling, you'll start building that confidence and feeling better. And you'll be like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna take on that next challenge. And that's what I mean about attitude. You gotta have a positive mental attitude. It sounds hippie-ish, but trust me, it really, really, really does work but it does take energy it does i understand that it takes energy to be that positive but over time it will take less energy and over time it will just become you oh, do you hate me have i done all right do you, you still want to stick around i hope you've made it this far into the video so i hope that you have and if you have thank you very much and i hope something that this bearded blonde haired sleeveless idiot has told you has even if one thing stuck with you from this that helped you have a better idea about how to attack something i've done my job i'm happy and if you are, then let me know in the comment section of any other topics you'd like me to cover because I want to do one of these a week now. Alongside the two videos I release each week to do with my fighting and all that journey towards the ring and the stage and everything I'm doing this year to show you guys that you can do things outside of the gym and also achieve a gym-like physique. I want to include some of these personal vlogs and topics and, and actual specific topics that you guys are struggling with. So make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to hit that notification bell that alerts you to every upload because they don't do that anymore. Who knows why? But there you go. Subscribe, bell, done. Comment section, what you want me to cover. I'm in Lex. Thank you all for paying attention. Hope we're still friends. Boom, baby. Lately I've been doing shit different Cooking like a chef, I've been all up in the kitchen Had to make a move, had to make a little distance A lot of people tripping, they could never see the vision Fuck that, tell them bye